Hi everyone, in this video, we will try to find out one of the factors on which the gravitational force between two objects depends using Kepler's second law of planetary motion. So, Kepler's original law is for ellipses, that planets revolve around ellipses and the time period is proportional to uh, A cube. Okay, But in this video, just to simplify things a little bit, we will be assuming that planets revolve around the star in a circular orbit just to keep things simple okay and i will be doing a rigorous derivation in which we assume the planets are going in, in an ellipse okay so here's our star and here's our planet going around in a circle so this looks more appropriate okay now this the radius of the radius around which the planet is revolving okay this is the planet and it takes some time capital T to make one full revolution now Kepler's second law states that this T square is proportional to R Cube. The square of the time period is proportional to the cube of the distance. This is what Kepler's law says. Okay. Now, to keep this planet in a circular motion, this star must apply a force radially inward. And our job today is to find out on what factors does this force depend. Okay. In particular, its relation with R. How does this force vary with the distance? Does it increase or does it decrease? If it decreases, then how does it decrease? This is what you are going to find. Okay. Now, since t square is proportional to r cube, we can write t square equal to some constant alpha times r cube. Alpha is just a constant. Now, if it, the planet is revolving around the star, it has a velocity v, let us say. Okay, then the time period will be 2 pi r divided by v. Okay, total distance upon speed. Now we just substitute this relation into this, this equation. So we find out 4 pi square r square just squaring this term upon v square is equal to some constant alpha alpha times r cube okay and now this cancels out we are left with only one r on our right hand side so from this we get that v square is equal to 4 pi square upon alpha r okay now this thing is a constant. 4 is a constant, pi is a constant and alpha is a constant from Kepler's second law. So, we can say that V is equal to some constant C upon R. The dependence is important. V, v square is inversely proportional to R. Okay. So, now we get this relation which is very useful. And now we need to find out the force. Okay. So, if you have this planet, let us let us say its mass is small m, it is being attracted inwards and this inward force, okay, this centripetal force is provided by gravitation. So, the centri centripetal force is given by m v square upon r, okay, v is the velocity, uh, speed and r is the distance from the from the center and this is provided by the gravitational force between the two objects so this is equal to f g okay f sub g and we just uh, plug in the term for v square so we get m v square is c by r upon r from this you can say that it's m c upon r square now, 
m is a constant mass of the planet doesn't change and c is also constant c was this this term over 4 pi square upon alpha and alpha itself is a constant so from this we can say that the force of gravity is inversely proportional to the square of the distance and this is a very important result so that this is what uh, newton realized that the force is is inversely proportional to 1 upon r square and this relation is known as the inverse square law so as your distance doubles your force becomes half sorry one fourth of the original and this realization led to the formulation of the universal law of gravitation now in my next video i will be proving the same relation in a much more rigorous sense for that stay tuned thanks for watching